Right, nice easy one today. First order of business is to get that handbrake mechanism installed on the E30 and adjusted up and working properly. And once I've got that done, I think I'm gonna bleed these new rear brakes that I fitted in the last episode and just check there are no leaks and check they all work as they should. So all the parts came in to do the handbrake job. I'm actually holding one of the old handbrake cables and they're actually not in such bad condition but whilst I'm doing a full refresh and setting this system up afresh, I'm gonna replace these two whilst I'm at it. Despite the fact I've done a rear five lug swap using E46 discs and E90 hubs, the original E30 handbrake mechanism should fit here in exactly the standard position so that shouldn't affect that at all. This would be like fitting a handbrake mechanism on a completely standard disc rear end BMW E30. So if you want to find out how to do this, hopefully I can show you today. All right, so let's get this wheel, caliper and disc whipped off and then I'll show you the parts and we'll get them fitted. Right, now I'm going to whip this caliper off by taking the two bolts out that are holding the adapter bracket on. It goes without saying you should avoid hanging the caliper off its brake line, so I'm just going to use a cable tie to temporarily hang it from that hole in the chassis. Good to have three arms sometimes. That should be fine there, I'd say. Right, now I'll whip the disc off by taking out this retaining screw. Okay, so we've now revealed the area where the handbrake mechanism lives. Uh, the cable itself actually comes through that little hole there. So I've just got all these handbrake parts mocked up on the bench so you can have a look at how it goes together. This is the new handbrake cable and it feeds in from the back side through the brake shield on the car into this clevis style retaining thing and it's held in place by this pin which once through there will never come out. So when you actually pull the handbrake lever in the car it will pull on this cable which will pull this expanding latch and press the brake shoes just very slightly against the inside of that handbrake drum. These two springs hold the whole thing together and apply the pressure to return the handbrake shoes to the position where they're not engaged. This at the top is an adjustment screw and one of the things that you'll use to adjust the handbrake correctly and of course as the shoes wear over time you will need to expand this screw slightly to counteract that. And these two in the middle are spiral pins with their compression springs. I guess these just retain the whole mechanism in the correct position in the car. To mount them, these go through the spring, through the shoe, and they poke through the brake shield on the car, and you turn them to lock them in place. A common problem on E30s is the brake shields wear over time and the thing that this spiral pin goes through gets weaker and weaker 
until it no longer retains it. A quick fix for that are these Lockheed washers and you can put these on the back side of the brake shield and they give it extra strength and it will last for many years more. So these aren't a standard part of a rebuild kit but you can pick them up very cheap and they're very very handy for this fix. I'll put links to all this in the description so you can check it out yourself and rebuild your own handbrakes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this back apart and I'm going to get under the car and fit this new handbrake cable which I believe is the first step. Right, I'm just offering this new handbrake cable up to the car and just so you can see where it's going to go, this, this end with the threaded, the threaded part needs to be fed into that tube that's on the body all the way in. Now, if you're removing original handbrake cables, a known issue is the ferrule on this side, which is usually metal, which presses into that hole at the, the end there. Presses in there. Now, th this new one I've got is plastic, so it should never have this problem. But if you have an original metal one, they can be rusted solid in there and cause you to have a major battle to remove. Now, my original ones were metal, but they weren't such a problem to remove, luckily. So hopefully you'll be lucky like I was. So let's try and thread this through, through that tube now. And it'll appear at the other end, hopefully. And at the other end, I can go and thread on the nut just a couple of turns just to retain it. So we can see that threaded part has appeared underneath the handbrake just there and there's obviously one for each side and these are the two nuts which I've conveniently left for myself here so what I need to do now is to somehow get this threaded threaded bar fed through this circular retaining thing on the handbrake and into this slot where I'm going to thread the thread on thread the nut on here. Okay, so after some fiddling around, I've managed to get that cable routed under this semicircular shaped thing at the end, at the bottom end of the handbrake cable. And, and here's the threaded part that I'm holding with the pliers here. So I need to push this through this square section and then I can thread on the nut onto the end of it, just a couple of turns to retain it. So I need to push it backwards and then feed it forwards again somehow, which is gonna be a bit awkward. Right, so I've successfully managed to feed this through here and just thread that onto the end of that nut. So now it's held in place. Now, let's go back to the hub and sort out that end. So now that end's retained, I can thread this end into the hub area, ready to hook up to that handbrake shoe mechanism. Excellent. Okay, first things first, I'm going to fit this expanding latch attached to the cable. So let's see if we can get that on there. Right. Right, these are always super awkward to put together. There's just too many parts that need to be specifically placed. So bear that in mind and just, you'll fiddle around for quite a long time and eventually, hopefully, it'll come together. So I'm first trying to put the shoes on with the top spring in place. I need to get the bottom lined up with that expanding latch. Now I'm going to try it with the adjuster in place to help me get a bit more leverage. That did help. next thing I'm going to put in are these pins. So to do that I'm going to need to rotate the hub so that I've got a straight shot with an allen key 
once I've fit it in the gap. I'm going to try and get my Lockheed washer on the back. Right, that's the second one on. Right, final thing to do is get this spring on, and in doing that I should get this, this bottom expanding latch lined up again, hopefully. And I'm going to do it by putting one side on and pulling the other side with a cable tied to stretch it and hook it into its slot, hopefully. Right, I think it's done, just needs adjusting now. So the next thing is to make sure the disc with the drum goes on uh, and goes over this mechanism. And what you wanna do is tighten up this adjuster to the point where it just starts to catch when it's going on and then back it off slightly. And that's the technique for getting a good initial setup. So let's start with that. seems to go on just fine to start with. Let's tighten this up. Right, it's definitely catching now. So I'm gonna back it back off a bit. Right, so I've put the disc on and I've tightened up the adjuster to the point where it's turning but it's dragging quite a lot and taking quite a lot of effort. And now I'm going to back it off about four notches on that adjuster and then hopefully that will mean the adjuster's correct and I can do the fine tuning adjustment on the handbrake end. So now I'm happy with that, I'm going to pull the disc back off and have a bit of a spray around inside in this mechanism with a bit of copper grease just to make sure it uh, stands the test of time. I'll have to make sure I don't get it on the shoes of course uh, and then I can move on to doing the other side. Put a bit of masking tape on there. which is lucky. Right, with the caliper back on, 
the final thing to do to adjust this handbrake is actually up here by the lever. So I need to tighten these nuts that are threaded on uh, up to the point where this is only maybe five clicks up before it firms up. So I've tightened it up quite a bit, maybe about two centimetres poked through there and it feels about right now. Nice and firm. Um, I'm definitely going to have to have a tweak with this once it's all bedded in and just make sure it's adjusted up correctly because no doubt things will settle and it'll change a little bit. But as far as the handbrake goes, for now it's done. I just need to chuck this gator back on and then I can move on to something else. Alright, so that's the handbrake completely done for today, which I'm quite pleased about. So as I've got a little bit more time, I think what I'm going to do is put some brake fluid in the system and just check those rear brakes, rear brake calipers don't leak or anything crazy like that and just get them bled up. Uh, and I might even throw some petrol in and see if the car will start after, after not being run for a very long time. Right, first things first, I'm just going to whip the lid off this brake fluid reservoir. Well, I can see that there is some old fluid in there, so it's not totally empty. I'm going to top it up just with some cheap stuff and then I can start pumping. Once I've done the front calipers as well, which is on the agenda, then I'm going to flush this whole system through with some fancier fluid, probably type 200, and then the job will be done. But for now, let's just get those rear calipers working. Try not to get this everywhere because it's bloody horrible. So it's a 9mm bleed nipple, I've got a brake spanner here just because I was feeling a bit posh. Um, and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to hook up this old tube to an empty old bottle and then I'm going to release it and tighten it as the old man, Captain Pumper, is going to be pressing the brake pedal in there on command and then hopefully we can have a nice easy time and, and get these calipers bled up. Open, close, closed. Open, opened, closed, closed. Open, opened, close, closed. All good, no leaks that I can see. Brilliant, rear brakes blown up. success with the rear brakes and of course the rear handbrake before, I think it's time to throw some fuel back into that fuel tank and see if this 316 will start. So it's actually been about 18 months since I started this M40 engine. If you remember it did run great after I did all the service work on it before I stripped the fuel tank out. Um, as all the fuel lines are dry, 
I suspect it's going to take quite a bit of cranking over before it actually fires, which is fine because I want oil pressure to build before it fires anyway, so it's kind of convenient. Now I'm expecting to throw some fuel in it, crank it over a little while and it bursts back into life as if it had never been dormant. Let's see what happens. Just check that this is petrol and not diesel. That's the good stuff. about 100 quid's worth at today's prices I'd say. No, I haven't charged that battery so we might end up with a full battery but it was a fairly new one I think. So, let's see. Is uh, encouraging. Doesn't seem to be any coughs yet. Hmm. Now, because I can't hear the fuel pump, I'm now thinking have I wired that up correctly? So, before I keep cranking over and kill this battery, I'm just going to whip the the access cover off underneath the back seat and just have a jiggle with the fuel pump wires. Okay, so this one is the fuel pump and I've just unplugged it. As noted in a previous video, they aren't proper connections these, but still they, they push on and, and they do seem to contact quite well. So I'm hoping that's not the problem. So what I want to do now is just check to see if there's actually power coming through this cable uh, to this pump, because obviously we're not hearing the pump whir up when we turn the ignition on. So let's just check that. Seems to be nothing now but if we turn the car over it does seem to be getting power have a look at this okay so either E30's only pump when the ignition is actually turning over or we have a different problem Yeah, I can hear the pump and I can feel it. It keeps going a little bit longer after the ignition stopped turning over. Okay, I think the fuel pump is working. Let's, let's turn it over a, a while longer and see if it starts.
Well, I'm really pleased the car starts back up again after 18 months of sitting, and I'm pleased with the work I've done today on the handbrake and the rear brakes. It's been very successful, actually. Uh, now the car is now turned round, and we can close the book on that rear end chapter and start work on the front. So please do make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the work I do on the front. Thank you very much for watching.